Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how I do the colour blending for swords and sabres and things like that. Um, I'm just going to do it all in one cut, I'm not going to chop the video up or anything like that, too much anyway. We'll see how it goes. Um, Alright, let's start with the... I'm going to use corn red just on the, on the whole... Uh, on the whole blade first, just as a base. So I'll start with that. Um, you can add just a bit of water. I'll put everything out on this palette here, just so you can see what's happening. But this is just um, a bit of it dipped on the brush and and then like submerged in water, so it's just a bit of water added on. And I'm just gonna like base the whole the whole thing. Could probably use a little bit more water. This is a really ratty old brush. It's not it's not anything special, so you don't need anything too high quality to do this step. Or any step really just be as long as you're getting the coverage that's all that really matters I haven't really painted with a camera in my face before, so this is new. And these layers are probably a little rough. It's not going to be like perfectly smooth or anything like that. So I'll try not to like go over where I've already painted because it'll rip up the layer and make a really ugly finish. I'm just going to use a hairdryer to dry it real fast. So I'll just do the one side. I'll do maybe I'll do the other side a different color, maybe green or something. Um, let's give it another another layer of red or another layer of corn red just to make it really opaque nice opacity things tend to look ugly when it's uh, wet when it's completely dry it goes all nice and smooth one tone the whole way <clears throat> okay, you can probably still see a bit of white through there. I'll fix that up just quickly. A little bit more paint. So I guess the key is to get all of your colors sort of plotted out first. So in this one, I'm just going to go three colors. It's going to be like a dark red all the way up to a bright red at the top or the tip. 
just like that. Um, so to get the really dark red, I've just gone like 50-50 Abaddon black with corn red. And I've got some that I've put in a pot that I prepared earlier. Makes it a bit easier. Um, all right, I'll just get that out. I'll probably just use the same ratty old brush. And I'll put it out on the palette so you can see how dark it is as well. You can mix it to how, how dark you want it. It doesn't have to be the same as mine, but whatever works for you. You can even make it black if you want. Like pure black. All right. I'll close up my other paint. All right. I'll get that out of the way. So I'll probably go to about here with this color. You can go as you can probably go higher up if you want but i'll just go about a third of the way and then i'll just paint all this bottom area solid solid opacity you'll hear me talking about opacity a lot that's just sort of how transparent or non-transparent it is i guess it's the uh, the polar opposite of transparent is opaque try and be like too perfect with it just for time's sake and I'll, I'll dry off with a hair dryer. layers are pretty ugly. <laughs> I'll probably be a bit more careful if I uh, didn't have a camera in my face, but it should work out. sort of see that there's like this shiny part of the paint where I've probably had to put too much paint on but that's all right I'll just I'll carry on anyway um, now let's go for the, the top color I'm gonna use evil sun's scarlet and I'll put that in the, uh, the next part of my palette as well so I get, I just get a big dollop of it on my brush and then I literally just dunk it in water. That's how I get my paints watered down, just like that. And then I'll mix it in here on the palette. Now, let's have a look. Let's, Paint the, the final third of the blade in this. It's actually a really thick layer. <laughs> I don't recommend that. But this is just for, for time's sake. I'm trying to make this uh, a bit quicker than usual.
probably see like the um, the streaks in the paint. You don't want to, you don't want that. So take your time and use like thinner layers maybe. But this is just sort of for demonstration purposes for how to blend. Um, all right, we'll do the next step. So this is where I guess the magic happens. This is where you actually blend the three colors together. Um, hopefully you can see that. It's quite, they're all quite different. Okay, um, let's see. So what I tend to do is use the, the mid-tone color and blend where they meet, where the colors meet, just blend those together. And the trick is to just water it down quite a bit. So what I'll do is I'll use another part of the palette just to show you how much, how watery it is. Um, let's go. So I've put about that much on a brush. It's probably about a drop. Um, we'll put that in there. Like that. And I'm just going to use this water. I'm going to use an eyedropper to um, sort of show you how much water I'm putting in. So we're going to go maybe three drops. One, two, three. Sorry for my uh, hand shaking. <laughs> Bit of a tremor. Um, all right, let's mix that together. Yeah, that's quite watery. Might even end up adding more paint to that. You can see like how clear that is. Basically the idea, it's, it works like a glaze. And you're just glazing the joints. So I'll do it here quickly. So the thinner the paint is with water, the more forgiving it is, I guess. Um, you can sort of like go all the way up here and it won't matter that much. Or, but the more paint you add, the more precise, I guess you'd have to be. So to speed it all up, this is what I generally do. I get a hairdryer and what I'll do here, just bear with me. I'm going to lay it on the table just so I can show you in real time like how it dries and okay there we go I'm just going to position this camera over here as well it's got a bit it's a bit bright there we go okay hopefully you can see that so I'm going to turn the hairdryer on setting is like well on mine I've got it on the maximum heat setting and I just use like the lowest fan I'm just gonna lay it on the table like that hopefully this isn't too loud so it looks like it's pulling down here I'm just gonna bring it back up here a bit over here so you can see the power. Okay. So it's a lot of just back and forth hair dryer. More paint, hair dryer, more paint, so on and so forth.
useful, I guess. You don't want to hold it too close to the uh, hair dryer. So you don't want to melt the plastic. So just be aware that running a hair dryer this long, this, like if you were to do it often, you're gonna rack up your uh, electricity bill pretty high. So just be aware of that before you do it. <laughs> but if I was to wait for this to dry nap like normally, this process would take hours. This takes so long. Another thing you'll notice is um, there's like watermarks all over the blade. It's quite ugly. So one way to sort of like fix that, I guess, is to just get normal water. You don't have to add any paint. I'm just going to use my paint water over here. I'll turn the hair dryer back on. And basically, you just want to like wash out all of those marks, see if it works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Actually, there's a pretty ugly mark. There we go. Works there. It's basically like cleaning the surface, making it all uniform again. It's still ugly when you hold it in certain angles of the light, but if you hold it at the right angle, it looks pretty. So it's still got a lot of, still got a bit of um, work to do here, not a lot, but a bit. Just for blending sake. So the amount of water, like the amount of paint that I'm putting on the brush right now is probably way too much. Um, what I might do is add a bit more paint. Since you can see it's 
there's no set method. It's sort of just back and forth, playing with um, the amount of paint and water that you have in the mix. There's no real sort of hard rule, at least for my method anyway. So I've just added a bit more to paint. I'll just mix that into there. I'll just have the tiniest little bit on the brush. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to use a bit of tissue to wick up all the excess paint that I don't need on the brush. You literally only need enough to make it, uh, you know, to get it on there like this. You know what I mean. Okay, so that's, I guess that's the reds blended. We could probably go further than that, make it, make the blend a bit more smoother, I suppose. Might just give it a little bit more. So with this one, maybe I'll I'll show you like a faster method of it. This is a this is being a bit more pedantic about it, getting the colours really smooth. But this one I'll make just a little speed, a little speed painting one. So now we're going to do the darker to the mid-tone blend. Dark tone to mid-tone. So using the same paint again. This, that sort of demonstrates just how thin the layers are, I suppose. I'm just building it up. So I guess to speed up the, the blend from the dark tone to the mid tone, you could add more paint perhaps. Starting to get there. To add sort of a big drop right on the, the borderline. That sort of speeds it up as well.
it's probably a bit better lighting wise Okay, that's looking pretty close. I guess the further you go with it, the more, obviously, the more smooth it's going to be. I'm just going to use water. Get my light back over here so I can see the reflection. some uh, edge highlighting as well finish out the video with that uh... 